Hello everyone and welcome back to another tutorial where in this one I'm gonna show you how to easily create beautiful lavender look here in Luminar Neo. First I'm gonna show you how to create it and then I will also show you how to save it as a preset so you can use it in the future on all your images. Now as always if you wanna follow me along all you need to do is to jump into the description of this video follow the link there and download the sample files so you can do the edit on your own computer. Now, as you can see, I'm already in Luminar Neo. We are in the catalog module. And as always, we starting by looking at the sample files. We have uh, two images here. And for the initial edit, we're gonna use the capture of this beautiful girl here. So once we have it selected, all we need to do is to click on edit on the top of our screen or use E on our keyboard to get into the edit module. In the edit module, as always, we're gonna start in the develop tool. It's located on the top of our main toolbar and that's the spot where you should start all your edits to make sure that your picture is ready for further editing. As always, we're gonna go to the bottom where we start by opening the optics tab and click on the auto defrange to make sure that we remove any halos or edge noise. Once we finish with that, we can close this tab and open the sharpness and noise reduction. It's always good to take care of both of them at the same time and we're gonna really keep it very simple and also we're gonna set it up in such a way that it will work on as many pictures as possible in the future. To do this, we're gonna start with the sharpening and actually we're gonna just set it to 40. That is generally a good number to start with and if you need to add more sharpening later on, you can always come back to this tool and adjust it. So generally when I set up presets and I think that there's gonna be a people on the image, I set up my sharpening to 40. After that, we also need to add some masking. We are gonna do that by increasing the slider and usually between 60 or 70 is a good number. By adjusting the masking, we basically telling the application to only apply this sharpening to the areas with the details, texture and edges. So now we have our sharpness adjusted. We have added 40 on sharpen slider and we have added the masking. So we can close this and now all we need to do is the noise reduction. Normally I would inspect the image further. However, again, as we creating a preset, I'd like to add a standard 15, which usually works very well on most of the images. Once we're done with the noise reduction, we are pretty much with everything down here and we can move to the top to the light section. Starting from the top, adjusting the exposure. I would actually like the picture to be brighter. So let's take the exposure and bring it all the way up to one. Now it does look a little bit too bright. However, don't worry, we will adjust that in the second. After this, we're gonna add a good amount of contrast. Usually around 20 or 30 works on this type of images. And then we're gonna move into the highlights and shadows. So with the highlight slider, we're gonna actually bring it down. Usually I like to put it somewhere around minus 50, minus 55. And you can see that by doing that, we have already taken care of some of the brightness. So highlights, minus 55. Then the shadows. With the shadow slider, we're gonna open it a little bit. We're gonna open some of the shadows but we're gonna do it gently, just uh, somewhere around 10. Now we're done with the light, so we're gonna move into the blacks and whites. With the blacks and whites, with the blacks, we're gonna start by pushing them, making them stronger. So we're gonna bring them up to 10. In opposite, with the whites, we're gonna actually crush them. We don't want them to be bright. So we're gonna take the slider and bring it down to somewhere around minus 60 really push your whites down. And again, you can see that we have added another step on how to reducing the initial exposure. So blacks on plus 10, whites around minus 60. Now we are done with the blacks and whites. We are done with the light. We're not gonna be using curves on this look, so we're gonna jump straight into the color. In the color, we have a four options. The white balance with the temperature and tint, and then we have the saturation and vibrant. We're not gonna adjust the saturation and vibrance, we're gonna be focusing on our white balance. 
starting with the temperature, we can make the image warmer or colder. And actually, for this look to work, we want to bring it down. So with the temperature, looking at it, I want to make sure that I have still some warmth in the skin, however, everything else to be a little cooler. So I think, actually, if I go even a little further, somewhere around minus 20, minus 25 will look quite good. After that, we're going to move into our tint. Again, with the tint slider, we can make the overall white balance more greener or more purple or magenta. Don't forget that all the sliders you can reset by double-clicking on their names. And for us, on the tint, we're actually going to bring the slider down a little bit to keep it up with the temperature. So cooler image with a little bit of more earthy green color. So minus 5. Once we're done here, we are pretty much finished with the develop tool. So we can close the color tab, we can close the develop tool, and we can move on. Now, going through the list of our tools here, we're going to move into the structure. When it comes to structure AI and adjusting images like this, where we're working with a really big depth of field, we have a kind of soft background, we have a lovely glow, I actually like to take the amount and bring it down somewhere around minus 10 or 15. By doing that, we will get a little bit of more glow on the background and in the highlights, and it will just make it look even nicer. So let's quickly double check the before and after. And the difference is very subtle. However, I think it helps in the overall look. So let's close the structure AI and going through the list, we now going to go into the details. So I always like to add a little bit of details by going into the small details and medium details. And my general number here with the small details, I like to go somewhere around 12. And with the medium details, 10. So it's not really based on anything. I just think these values work really well. They make the overall look a little bit more defined. They really take the texture and details and push them up and leave the rest of the image alone. So in the details tool, small details around 12 or 15 and medium around 10 or 12. Once we're done with the details, we can close it and we only have one more tool to adjust here in the essentials and that's the color tool. In the color tool, we can open the HSL panel and in the HSL panel, we're going to continue with creating of our lavender look. So we're going to start in a hue. And don't forget that you can just click on the gray drop down box and here you can choose between hue, saturation and luminance. Now, if you want to see a full tutorial on how to use this tool, we have it already on our YouTube channel and I will make sure that I will put the link in a corner of this video. But for now, we are adjusting the hue. So let's stay here. And when it comes to adjustments here, we're going to adjust the yellow a little bit. Again, we're going to go towards the green. Similarly to the white balance, we want to make the green stand out a little bit. So just go somewhere around 10 or 11. Then we're going to go into the cyan. Just bring the slider down to somewhere around minus 20. And by doing that, we're taking some of the blue parts of the image and making them closer to the green. After that, we're just going to go into the blue, where we're actually going to take the blue slider and bring it up to 10. So only three adjustments on our hue part, yellow to plus 10, cyan to minus 20, and blue to plus 10. After this, we're going to click on a gray drop down box again, and we're going to skip saturation as we're not going to do any adjustments there, and we're going to go straight into the luminance. In the luminance, nothing major, I just want you to take the red and bring it down. So all we want to do here, we just want to make the red a little bit darker by bringing the slider down. So once again, on luminance, take the red slider and bring it down to minus 50. Now we are done with the HSL panel. We are finished with the color tool and we're going to continue with the creating of our lavender look. The next tool we're going to be using is toning. Now we're going to go down into the creative section of our main toolbar, go into the toning and then open it up. We're going to start by increasing the amount slider to 100 and then make sure that the shadows tab is selected. You can click between them. We're going to go into the shadows first and what we're going to do with our shadows, we're going to increase the saturation. So let's just push it up 
and we actually want to set it up. So let's take our slider and let's bring it quite far because what we want to create, we really want to create kind of blue purple look. So usually somewhere around 250, 270 works really well. I think that the 270 works well here. And with the saturation slider, now we can adjust it if we want to, but I actually quite like it around the 40. So we leave it there for the moment. So we have our shadows, saturation on 40 and hue on 270. After that, we're going to move into the highlights. So we select the highlights and similarly, we're going to take our saturation slider, bring it up. And then we're going to take our hue slider and push it again towards the purple. This time, not that far. I'm thinking maybe just somewhere around 240, maybe 250. And I think it's a little bit too strong. So let's actually bring the saturation in the highlights down to 10. So what we're doing with this, we're adding a little bit of color or fade color into the shadows, in this case, the purple, and then also a little bit of blue purple color into the highlights. So let's quickly check the before and after, and you can definitely see the difference here. Once we finish with the toning, we can close it. And if we want, we can go into the mystical tool and just add a little bit more of the mystical glow in it. Let's just take the slider, bring it up to somewhere around 20 and close it. Finally, we only have one more tool to use. So we're going to go all the way to the bottom of our main toolbar into the professional section and we're going to open the color harmony. Now the color harmony tool can be a little bit overwhelming. However, once again, we have a full tutorial on how to use it on our YouTube channel. And one more time, I will place the link to it in a corner of the video. Here, all we're going to use is the split color warmth. And don't worry too much about what it does. We're going to start by going into the warm and we're just going to bring the slider up. And all we're doing, we're adding a little bit of warmth into her skin. Let me just show you before and after. You can see how it was a little bit too bright and too blue. And with that, we add a little bit of warmth. So I think somewhere around seven, maybe 10 is too much. Seven looks good. And similarly, with a cool slider, we're just going to add a little bit of purple or magenta. So we're going to take the slider and push it a fair bit. I think maybe somewhere around plus 20 or 25. One more time. Let's have a look at the before and after. And you can see how using the color harmony tool really helped us to finish the overall look. Once we finish again, we can close it and we are pretty much done. Let's have a look at the before and after, and you can really see how much of a difference we created. I really like this look a lot and I hope that you're going to enjoy it too. Now, as I promised you, we're going to save it as a preset. And to do this, we are just going to click on the actions at the bottom of our screen and click on save as preset. After that, you're going to be moved into the preset section where you can see the my preset library open and your preset is ready here. You just need to name it. So let's call this lavender look. Once you finish, you just hit enter and now we can try it on another image. So let's go into our catalog module. And this is the time where we're going to use the second image. Click on it to select it and now just move it into the presets module. We already have our My Preset library open. So let's just hover over the preset, click on it and apply it to the image. Again, you can see the before and after. And you can also go into the preset itself, take the slider and adjust the amount of it on the image to get the level of the look you are looking for. So for example, for this one, I would only go to 63. And you can again see the before and after here. So this is how you create this beautiful lavender look here in Luminar Neo. Now, if you want to save some time and maybe try other looks similar to this, you can try our new Luminar Neo Summer Bundle. It comes with over 700 elements and one of them is a collection of beautiful lavender presets. It includes the one we just created, but it has nine more presets that you can try on your images. They are all ready to be used here in Luminar Neo. And once you install them, you can just hover over them, try to apply them into your image and see how they transform them directly in front of your eyes. 
Now, if you want to find out more about our brand new Luminar Neo Summer Bundle, visit our website cleverphotographer.com and to get the best possible price, follow the link in the description of this video. And there you have it. If you want a copy of our popular Luminar Neo shortcut cheat sheet, there is nothing easier than heading to our website cleverphotographer.com slash Luminar Give. While you're there, you can also check out one of our popular Luminar Neo products, or you can stay here and watch more videos about Luminar Neo. For today, I hope you enjoyed this episode. If you did, please make sure that you like, comment and share on this video. And also don't forget to subscribe to our channel so we can keep creating content like this. For today, thank you very much for watching. My name is Jacob Bors and I can't wait to see you in the next video.